Hello and welcome to this section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, here we're going to continue where we were leaving off in the last section dealing with dividing polynomials. In this section we're going to divide polynomials by polynomials. So uh, we're going to have large groupings of terms and we're going to be dividing by other large groupings of terms. And what you're going to find in this section is that it's going to look very, very similar to division that you did in third grade. You know, when you actually have the division line and you actually do long division, you know, that we learn in, in third and fourth grade, um, your division of polynomials like this is going to look a lot like that. So even though I'm confident you know how to divide numbers, I want to actually review long division really briefly, take two minutes, because the parallels are going to be directly related to dividing numbers. So let's do a, a problem. I'll try to pick some big numbers so you're not too bored. Um, but let's review things a little bit. Let's say you have 354 and you're dividing that by the number 27. All right, so we know that we can get a calculator and say 354 divided by 27, we're gonna get some number. But how do we do it by hand? Let's do a little bit of a review. First thing you do is you take 27 and you try to see if it will divide uh, at least one time into three. There's no way 27 is gonna fit into three, so you can't do that. So then you look at the, two, the first two numbers, 35. Does 27 divide into 35 at least one time? The answer is yes. 27 is gonna go into 35 only one time. So you put a one here. And you put a one over the five to signify that you were kind of looking at both of these digits here. Now after you put the one there, you have to multiply one times 27, which is gonna give you 27, and then you draw a line, and then you put a subtraction symbol there, and you need to subtract the 35 minus 27. And when you do that, let me switch colors, 35 minus 27, I think everyone would agree, is going to be 8. So I'm going to write an 8 down here. Now after I do the subtraction, I look up in my original problem and I see if I have any more digits. And I do have a 4 that was unused, so I'm going to draw a dotted line with a little arrow. This 4 gets dropped down. Then I repeat the process, so it's kind of like an over and over again thing. I try to look, does 27 go into 84 at least one time? Yes, it does. I know it fits at least once. Does it fit two times? Yes, I believe it does. Does it fit three times? Well, you may not agree with me off the top of your head, but trust me, it does go three times. So I'm going to put a three up here over the four to signify basically that I was looking down here. It goes three times. And let's figure out what to do next. After you put your number here, you take three times 27. And when you multiply 3 times 27, you're going to get 81. So again, you draw your line, you draw your subtraction symbol, and you're going to subtract these guys. So let me switch colors again. What is 84 minus 81? Well, that's just going to be a big fat 3. So when you get done with this, you look up here and you see, do I have any more numbers to drop down? I don't have any more numbers to drop down. 27 cannot go into 3, so I'm basically done. So what I have figured out, the way you write this down, is that the answer to this problem, 354 divided by 27, is 13 with a remainder of 3. So that means that it can go 13 times, but I will have 3 left over after it goes and fits those 13 times. And to prove that to you, to kind of show you this, to check it, so to speak, if you take 13 times 27, you should get something that makes sense. So let's do 27 times 13, right? 27 times 13. When you do this and you do all the multiplication, you're going to get 351 as an answer. Notice that this is